would say to residents that actually live in the precinct are law-abiding. The uh, everyday average working man, the respectable people, we have no problems at all. The only time they don't like you is when you catch them doing something they're not supposed to be doing. And all the time I've been here, I've never really had any problems with the community itself. I don't consider this, you know, the riffraff and whatnot out here in the street uh, part of the community. If you've got a job to do as a policeman, and, and you might get about 5% of them might give you trouble. And the other 95 don't give you much trouble because they know whether they're wrong or right. And they know who you are. Let's get somebody on it then, I mean. Wait a minute, Mark. Take this red tape paperwork. Suppose he can't write his tongue to break on it, I mean. Red tape is good. They show you the form they used back when George Washington came over here. Write it all down. You know what I want from the police? What is that? I want the police to protect life and property in my neighborhood, and that's all. If you do that, then you'll cover everything in. Uh-huh. I've seen them twice, if twice that I can remember, ride through this street. But never once have I seen them walk through this street. Never once. They don't seem to let you get along with them, you know. Well, the police, though, sir, that's something I don't deal too much with, but as far as I can see and know about, it seems as though it gets along all right. As far as I know. I can't work with a road. Can't get along, man. I've been fighting roads there since I was young. Yeah, and they still call us niggas, man. The real man to ask is the, the, the hard-working, uh, lower-middle-class, father-of-family black man who really wants it. He's the worst prey of crime than I am. But the point is, the rod came through here and messed up everything. It burned everything. And that's, that's, that's what closing down the white boys run. They ran. All those in favor, raise their hand. All those opposed? Five. All right, the motion is carried. We'll proceed with the, uh, with the election of your chairman and vice chairman. First of all, I would hope that the chairman and vice chairman would uh, work closely with the staff and doing such things as reviewing previous meetings, the minutes of previous meetings, uh, of uh, perhaps uh, developing an agenda according to what the chairman wishes. Uh, well, it's still open for nomination, Mr. Chairman. Are there any additional nominations for chairman? Nobody's got their hand up. Can we stick to our main job first, and that is getting the precinct selected? Can we give each person who is on this committee credit for being a fair-minded citizen? If we're going to sit up and anticipate everything that can go wrong, it will never get off of the ground. It says the committee will have complete freedom in determining the criteria by which the site for the pilot program is to be chosen. We're into our third meeting, and most of us are busy, and the thing is so simple. And I feel that the old business is simply what's in this letter. We haven't done this. And I'd also like to recommend that we ought to have a parliamentarian appointed by the committee so that all of us can quit playing games, because this is what we've been doing for the last two weeks. I would move that this committee appoint the chair, appoint a committee from among volunteers. It would be helpful if the chair How got a little chair. out of order when you haven't heard it? We got a motion and an amendment on the floor. Hey. Well, we've got I suggest that we um, have much better meetings if the chair didn't participate too much. I mean, we need a, we need a chair. chair. You know, you know I've, I've listened to discourteous people long enough in this meeting. What's all about? I can't understand it. Chairman, I can't understand it. Chairman, should not talk as much as you. I don't dig it at all. I mean, I don't dig it at all. People that believe in, the, in orderly procedures are important to keep your thing and jump up in the meeting and start yelling. Marion? Everybody in this mother knows that the police is the number one problem in America. And if you all don't want to deal with that, that's your problem. But at least let me have a say-so and whether or not it's the kind of thing I want. And I don't think a lot of us understand that. Maybe we're happy that the mayor asked us to come here. I'm not. You know, no, no big thing for me. I've been on more important committees than this. So I'm saying that my issue is how do you get the committee to use its power? Now, I'm not concerned about what happens to Marion Barry because when I go out here more than likely. I can deal with the police, more than likely. But I'm talking about what do we do for the 600,000 black people out here who do have a problem with the police. I move that the secretary 
call the roll and let each person at this point state whether or not he can carry out the charges of this letter as he was appointed by the mayor. Do you have a motion well, you, yeah. to put it on the floor? It would be nice if I could, if somebody we could understand it. Well, yeah. I don't understand oh, what Mr. Ball's motion is. You have a motion, Mr. Chairman, well all you're supposed to do is put it on the floor. I think this motion was covered in the first meeting. We all voted at the first meeting to carry out what it was we were called here for. So I don't see any point in having another roll call. Mr. Shaw, I have a motion now, Mr. Chairman, on the floor. Second the motion. All those in favor of vote by roll call, and that was I said originally, by roll call. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we by roll call. Secretary, like to read the roll? James Baldwin. Yes. Marion Barry? No. Virgil Pine. Um uh, Brown. Yeah. First to eighth, Thorny Hour. <coughs> Station at one. Moody. Yeah. Eight to thirteenth on the half. One thirty four when Woods goes to court this afternoon. And 408T from 8 to 12. Littles? 13th to 16th on the hour. 14th and V is a school crossing all day. Marble? 16th to 19th. very simple. I feel that if I'm going to be out there, and I don't mind because I got a tough back, that I ought to get something for people out here in the community. I think that's my role as a leader or in leadership position is to get something if I can do it and be beat to death if I can do it. But if I'm going to be beat to death, I might as well get something for it. And I'm talking about the control of this uh, whole program. That's why I can't move ahead. That's why I got problems. That's why I, uh, I can't get the enthusiasm to go. Now, it seems to me that that last statement in here says, if there are any questions, please call Mr. Shellow's office. Now, I don't know whether anybody else called Mr. Shellow's office, whether anybody had conferences with Mr. Shellow. I know I did. Mrs. Sarpy, I did not contact Mr. Shellow. I had quite a few questions. So I confess to negligence in that particular respect. I would like to ask for some direction. I'm interested in the overall objectives and specific, specifically how once the precinct has been selected and either erected or occupied, it will function to speak directly to the problems for which this committee was created. And I'd like to hear that from you, sir. A pilot precinct implies that there's an experimental quality to it. That means that we're going to try out new ideas. We're going to try out another relationship between the police and the citizenry. So who is we and who's got control? Uh, we, uh, we represent, uh, in this case, the city government, no? The police. We're not really talking about this committee, then, when you say we are going to try to no, make innovations. All. All, all right. Thank you. No, no, I, I want you to finish. I didn't want to. Okay. The uh, all overall goal of the project is to try to get at what we recognize is now a pervasive distrust between the citizens and the police. Now, when you talk about control, it falls short 
of a total citizen control of the precinct. And there was no, there was never any, uh, never any provision in the grant or in the plan for that sort of control. That's absolute control. Is that clear? We in the black community see the police as enemies. And I remind everybody here that I may very well be shot as I walk out of that door if I happen to anger some white police. I'm very much aware of that, and every black person is. And therefore, we want to control those individuals, especially since the central police force is not capable of even recruiting the capable black men in this black city. It has to go out to places like odd West Virginia and find individuals who have very questionable backgrounds. I, Charles Cassell, can no longer serve on a committee which cannot possibly make changes if it functions only in an advisory capacity. I see a constant recurrence of the conflict between the police and the community until the com community finally has some measure of control over the police. That means to make decisions. We are sitting here today trying to select the area, and it was not going as long as we keep having this stuff. Look at this stuff. If you're meeting, you select your precinct, but whatever precinct that you put it in, Marshall Brown will put every heart, every drop of blood, every energy that I have from now on to organize against this goddamn thing. Girl, and you can't do what you're going to have to do, so I'll leave and you get your people. Yes, sir. Oh, I don't think this is To come here and have people to want to, you, to, petty politics, that's what it is, petty politics, as small as they can get. You know, because some people come in here it, within their minds to cause confusion what is happening here. That I come here, away from my people, to try to do something that's going to help the city and the kids and everything else. And y'all people sit up here to play games. You know, when you get straightened out, oh, Mr. Secretary, I'm not saying I'm resigning. But if they get any kind of understanding, right, send me a, a letter, post or something, so I can come back here and we can get together on this thing, please. And to sample these wishes, tonight hearings are being held in three of the precincts. Can we get a truthful vote for number 13 precinct out of this audience? No. There's not anybody who lives in this precinct that's black and that's court held from the police department wants this program. Now, we select who works in the neighborhood, and if he lives in the neighborhood, and if he's black, it's very unlikely he's going to be coming down on his brother. Regardless of how we vote, we are the people of yesterday. You can't buy the youth anymore. But why is all of these black community got this poly program? We're tired of being guinea pigs. Think about the poly police. White folks is conning again. Um, <clears throat> when your name is called, you give the precinct of your choice. Mr. Edward Brooks. Two. Precinct 2. Mr. Virgil Crimes. 14. 14. Monsignor Gingras. Number 13. Mr. Theodore Higgins. Number 13. Number 13. Mrs. Elizabeth Sarpy. Number 2. Mr. John, John Zoyak. Mr. Chairman, Federation of Citizens Association instructed me to vote for no precinct. It is opposed to the concept of the model precinct. All right. Uh, the results of that ballot number 13 has 14, number 14 has 11, and number 2 has 6. And, uh, Dr. I'm wondering whether we should not close with a prayer rather than open with a prayer today. <laughs> this is what citizen participation is, and it may be a long process, but I have faith that in the long run it's a sound one. I think that, uh, that the wisdom of your choice will be borne out and we'll try the best we can to do as good a job as we can at 13 as in any of the other precincts. I'm going to adjourn. Any other business anybody would like to bring up? We're not in the meeting. Second. 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 Um, regarding how to set up an election, this is a very complicated thing. It turns out to be also rather expensive. How many on the board? No decision on that either. But I yeah. just don't, I don't think you people have the right concept on this. When you think that a police force is an adversary force occupying a territory. And I told that right to Mayor Washington, right smack in his face. Because they don't accept me as a first class citizen. Oh, so I have to do it myself. First -class no, I'm not. Name a place where I'm a first class citizen. Well, I think all the laws provide that you are. Well, nobody abide uh, by the laws. They did. We didn't have to go to the police file thing. Well, now you nobody abide by the laws. Just see? tell me where you're not accepted on that. I think you, you've got all the the um, rights 
Judge. By law, haven't you? And so the group is so uh, agreed, and this is your program, and uh, anyway, you get paid. Has everybody signed uh, so they could be paid? Uh, <laughs> gentlemen, uh, shall we begin to talk uh, uh, to the issues that uh, have most importance to you, and feel free to talk. Uh, We're going to get a lot of training in the next year and a half. As it stands right now, we're supposed to be finding out what the, what, how, what the, uh, the problems of the citizen on the street are and how we should better react to them. How about you know, them finding out about what our problems are, too? I made a suggestion, which was, in order to reach these people, is to have them here. Uh, you know, the, the leaders, the Gaston Neals, the Rap Browns, the, the Marion Barrys, you know. They're heard more than the decent citizens, because decent citizens go to work in the morning, they come home at night, and they're home, you know, and, and that's it. They, they go out. The only time they're heard from is when they go down to the store and get robbed. How do you gentlemen feel about how that uh, citizens group ought to operate? Do you want to talk about it a little bit? Anything at all that we do here is worth a try to try to avoid some of the disastrous things that have happened throughout many cities uh, in this country that have, we've all been ashamed of. I don't know. Are we getting real readings on what uh, the opinion is out in the community? There seems to be some attitude uh, among maybe some of us that uh, uh, the citizens in this uh, precinct have a completely negative negative attitude towards the police officers, and I don't believe this is true at all. Maybe everybody's not convinced of that. It's still not going to appease the militants down there that are causing so much of the problem to begin with. So whatever we do here is not going to help the situation down there at all. It's got to be the people down there. May I have your attention, please? <laughs> Why? Number 13 selected as a pilot precept when it was under strong protest. They voted that the 13th precinct should get the project. Who, who is they? Who is they? Who is they? This project is an experiment. This is your opportunity, beginning opportunity, for the citizens of the 13th precinct, from one end to the other, top to bottom, to have a say. Police policy in your precinct. I right here. We don't listen to what you have to say. I was one of those persons. And I went to the first meeting in the hope that I could get something done for black citizens in terms of police department. But when I got there, I discovered that the program had already been packaged and put together. Secondly, what we discovered was that when we finally got out of the nitty gritty, these citizens would have more or less an advisory role rather than a control role to hold the police. And so I think we ought to understand that either we're going to let them know we don't want this precinct pilot program like it is, or we're going to control it. And if we can't control it, I think we're going to run it out of here. Well, you I tell you, I am actually ashamed that these young people are in my generation. If I were to do some of the stuff these punks are doing out on the street now, my old man would kick my fanny up around my ears. Personally, I believe a police officer's job is to enforce the law as written and not to be a sociologist or a psychiatrist. There's a heck of a lot of times when you've got to be, sure, but they should teach you the law. Somebody cold-cocked him out here and put him out in and his other guy around the corner somebody hit him on the head. Jesus Christ. You mean that's what the firebox for? You all right, man? Well, I know it. The pool room, what running? All yeah. right, now look, Mr. Wallace. Okay. You were inside the pool room, right? Yeah. You were playing pool. Mm -hmm. All right, what happened yeah. then? You were in there playing pool. Mm -hmm. Did somebody just walk up and hit you? Yeah. For no reason at all? Yeah. They playing it. Pool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You going to do this one? Do? Bam a lamb, bam a lamb. Well, what were you arguing about? I don't know. You don't know? Yeah. You bound to know why he hit you. Well, he didn't hit me. Just well, all right, down. I know he didn't hit you. But now, you were standing there arguing with somebody. You say you don't know who he is, you don't know who he looked like, you don't know anything. He just hit you. Why? Hmm. I think I'm running out on it. For well, what? Hmm. I don't know why. You know, we social for fun of fellow. What happened? Okay, Mr. Wallace, look. Come, oh, you can come with me. I'm going in there with her right now. What can you do like this? 
people fail to understand that it's the times that we are living in now because of the uh, decisions, uh, decisions of the Supreme Court and then, of course, uh, uh, all these here, uh, well, like uh, these here minority groups uh, rebelling and the uh, majority of the people are frustrated to some, some, de uh, some degree. The policeman goes down the street and tries to make an arrest. Well, there's 15 people that are ready to jump on And In, uh, in the si situation at 14th and Euclid, the, that Mrs. Haskins had already backed me down the steps and back out onto the sidewalk and into the street. And all this time, I hadn't drawn my service revolver, and I, I would ask people along the side of the street, will you help me? Will you help me? And nobody would help. They were all sitting there. They were, they were clapping and, and, and uh, laughing. And, you know, get him, get him, and all this. And then after I did draw my service revolver, I still kept asking, will you help me? Will you help me? And no, they sit there and clap and they'll laugh. And I, the first shot, I shot the woman in the leg. The first shot hit her. That should have stopped her. No, it didn't. I kept going, and then finally I fell, and it hit my arm, and I shot her in the stomach then. But if they had helped when I asked them to, anyone, the, all that, everything could have been avoided because... Had someone helped, I would never have drawn the service revolver. None of the people actually stepped in and said, look, Mrs. Haskins, uh, this is an officer, lay down your knife and, uh, and behave yourself. Nobody came, nobody ever did but that. In, in that same situation, I can guarantee you one thing. If it ever happens again, I won't wait till I bust my arm before I shoot. We do no good for those of us who oppose the project in one form or another to come and just talk to ourselves. So we invited Mr. Shallow, Mr. Morgan over for you citizens living in this community to express yourselves the way you feel it. And uh, I just sort of point to people and ask to come and, uh, and What confuses me is that how in the hell can you do in one or two days what the FBI Academy, the Secret Service, and all of this morass of travail that the, the Metropolitan Police go through for their training? How can you act as a panacea when they have failed. Now, both of you can wrestle with that, and I'm going to yield the floor to my brothers and sisters. In the training program, we will offer 300 hours of training. This project intends to do something that has not been done in any city in the United States. In other words, the 13 precinct police officers are already in this program, in training, in orientation, and being paid from the grant. That's right. Who is orienting them? Well, the staff is telling them about the project at the beginning. Uh, incidentally, neither Dr. Raymer nor myself have ever uh, been police I officers. Your, I believe your background, though, is in urban psychology or dealing with police problems in the so-called ghetto. Uh, no, I'm not a specialist on, on ghetto problems, so-called ghetto. I don't know what the ghetto is, but I'm not, I'm not a specialist. Presidential Committee on Crime and no, in no. the City. I was, the, I was third in charge of the Kerner Commission. That's the Riot Commission. Oh, where did that take place? The suburbia, Mr. Shello? No, that did not. Have you read the Kerner Commission report? The first thing he should have did, as he speak about the criteria, that's what you got to do. Go down and get the soul people, the people who knows what it's like or what these people's frustration is. Believe me, brother, you have directed from. <laughs> this is our third time to assemble. I'm saying to these messengers, if the leprechaun had the taste of watermelon in his mouth, he would not be wanting to sell us a political package loaded with substitute, but perhaps suggest a design and installation of a circle at 14th and U, the bronze statue of Martin Luther King looking south. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There it is. Feel with it. Thank you. I'm speaking for a whole lot of people in this community who have supported me and in, in, in mind our efforts to sabotage or stop the model precinct project. You ask, number one, that someone be placed in charge of Dr. Shallow. Is that correct? You ask that the police training be stopped. Is that correct? Right. It has stopped. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. 
Now, all right, now, I mean, where do we go from here? There's no police no training going on. Uh, no police no training going What? The fact is, we are at war against the model precinct project, which means I violated every statute of war by taking your propaganda and giving it out to the community. And still they reject it. Now, what else do you want no me to problem, do? That's why we gave it to you. But we're saying, let them reject it by a popular ballot. It will not work if the people are right to speak themselves. That's all we we try, we we try to tell you we're on the same side. I think, I frankly think that that uh, if you guys hadn't prevented us from getting an election, we'd have a board in existence right now. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't have a board. Unfortunately, we've been uh, we've been sort of bogged down for the last month. Mr. Barry's office may I help you. We're not, we're not going to pay federal excise tax, right? We'll get it back. Think, I don't think we'll get it back being a government agency. Yeah. Uh, is Mrs. Harris in? Uh, this is Marion. Who is this? Uh, is she coming in today? Is Walter Washington in? Because of constant struggling and agitation, mm -hmm. on February 19th, the election of a rubber stamp board was stopped by citizens. We brought the government to agree that the elected citizen board will have complete control over the budget and spending of monies for all programs relating to the community aspects of the project. The citizen board will have complete control over hiring and operations of staff employed to work with the project, except as may otherwise be delegated by the board to other persons. At that point, an election process will be set up that will in the next four to six weeks uh, have elected neighborhood board. As I said earlier, this is a people's victory, a victory for community control. Now as to our specific plans. In this letter to the mayor of April 24th, the five demands. Is this really another project? Are we talking about another project? Does it depart that much from the, uh, the conditions that were set down in the grant itself? I don't know really what is meant by them. Control over the staff, the hiring, and I assume the firing of the staff as well. Uh, what do we got? Get rid of one of us. We have the right of appeal right on up into the courts. Do you feel that if we met these demands, that they would come up again with further demands? That's a good question. Point. Well, uh, you know, that's a good point. Now, <laughs> those demands aren't substantially different from the kind of um, citizen input that should be in the police department um, from the very outset. The time through this project for a complete push on citizens' control. I don't think this is the proper vehicle. That's a uh, sort of a political reality, if you will. Well, that's why timing so is so do. important. Yeah. That's why yeah. timing need be considered with what we're doing here. This meeting was called to discuss the procedures for the election of the board. You know, I served many months to try to get a better model of precinct, meaning one that is more relevant to the black community. If these people are set up to do this thing for the black community, then why are they challenged before they get the job done? Who are these people that are elected to this board? I want to see them right now. They're here. Where are they at? I want all of them standing up. I want to move this agenda, Madam Chairman. I want my hands. I, want I am not going to run over anybody, Mr. Jones. This man has the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can all be ladies and gentlemen. And I hope, I hope now, I hope we can have citizens' participation without having to use profane and vulgar language. You're going to deal with it. You're dealing with it. You're dealing with it. You're dealing with it. Thompson, how are you? Hi, hi, Mr. Lord. Good to see you. Hi. Oh, my senior. How are you, sir? Good. Good to see you. You want to go right in. You have the right. Yeah, you got the right. Hello. 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 Go right in. Hello. Hi, how are you? 
Number one, this project is supposed to be for the citizens of the third district. Now, I think it's unfair for Mr. Duncan and Mr. Shallow to select the people to come here. I know at least 10 or 15 organizations and people who have not gotten an invitation to come here. I think that's unfair. Uh, Jeff, this is by invitation only. I don't have a car. Uh, Mr. Rollock, I don't have a car. Excuse me. Yeah. All right. Excuse me. 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 Don't push me. Oh, you don't yeah. make me late, man. You better watch. Don't deal with it, man. Go in there and break up that simple-ass meeting. Yeah. We don't need the police here. And we don't here. need all the police out there. And we'll have order in this meeting. We'll have order. No, we'll have order. You know very well, Mr. Every meeting you've been in, right? You know very well. Wait, wait, hold, hold, hold it, hold it. Every meeting that we have called, no, every meeting we have called been ordered. Somebody else just talked beside you and your crowd. Everybody. All your crowd. What's your crowd? Get up. Ah! Get up. Ah! Get up. Get up. Get up. The issue is whether people outside can come in. The issue is whether people outside can come in. So what? To order. Bang again. It is order. We want the people outside, inside. That's all. No, I'm going to stay in here where I was. It is not fair to let a crowd out because they're all a crowd from one organization to pack the meeting. The problem is, is predominantly one of protection. Will you be quiet, I listen to you. It's one of protection for people and one of services. Right. Can I talk? Listen. I We listen to you. Waiting now, Jerry. Yeah, they're putting everybody out. So, see that what they're doing? They're putting everybody out right here. See that? Let's go down to the Y, everybody, and have a meeting. The meeting's over. Sergeant, sir. Sergeant. The meeting's over. Sergeant. Go ahead, everybody. Don't walk through me. The I'm not moving. Go ahead, everybody. I don't think you're strong as I am. I believe it from my heart. I ain't gonna harm you if you don't harm me. I ain't gonna catch you if you don't catch me. Believe that, brother. Lord Sergeant Ingram on 2633. 10-4. How bad is it? Whip that shit off. So today what you saw was some of us raising questions of who's going to control the project. We told Robert Shallow and Charlie Duncan that they couldn't on their own come into our community and do what they wanted to do. OEO, at some point, is going to have to get tired of the project going on without any board. They got to do that. For those of you all that are new, it has taken us 15 months to go this far and we've learned a lot. So a lot of what you might be thinking, a lot of questions you might have are not quite answered. Just rest assured that we are working from experience and we're going to do everything we can to protect the interests of all citizens uh, at all times that you have to sort of learn with us as you go and sort of trust that we're going to move and keep the thing going. The revolution has come. Time to pick up the gun. The revolution has come. The jailhouse. Time to pick up the gun. I'm a hog and dead a hog. We're sliding around. It came up with a pity. Time to pick up the gun. Time to pick up the gun. Revolution has come. Time to pick up the gun. I hope that my resignation will make it possible uh, to have a, uh, a clean election. I'm a white man and I've uh, learned through my upbringing of, to, uh, to
to have uh, to have derogatory attitudes about blacks, and it's in me, it's deep in me, just as it is in uh, in many of uh, my fellow whites, uh, just as uh, as distrust and perhaps hatred of whites is is so deeply ingrained in many blacks, and I, it's a sickness. Uh, racism ha is a sickness, and the uh, it's it's like uh, it's a chronic illness. It's like malaria or diabetes. You never shake it. You never can get rid of it throughout your entire life. But you've got to have an antidote for it. You have to have some kind of control for it. How are y'all brothers doing today? Brother wants you to come on out and vote tomorrow now. In our election. All right. We have people of various and sundry types uh, running. We have the whites and the blacks and the Spanish, the poor and the youth. Uh, I think first of all, we should recognize that everybody is opposed to crime. What we really want is a police force that is our friend, but also our protector. This is just a beginning step. And I hope the citizens don't think that we are going to be miracle workers, that we're going to solve all the problems. The third district, we ain't going to do it with this board or with five other boards. I was born in the ward. I'm a graduate of the Morgan School down the hill. My children went to this school one time a number of years ago. I was on the platform Sunday night with my opponent. I don't see him here tonight. I, yeah. Is he here? <laughs> Um, well, you won't be coming. I can't you. promise you I'm coming. No, no. Um, because I have to go to, uh, take my wife to work. Okay. And these are the I'm things we are trying to, to get rid of. Hate, yeah. anger, crime. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank Would you like to let me explain to you about the project? Or Oh, or maybe some other time. Some other time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I want to serve. I like this community. Thank you. First of all, you have to register. Wait a minute. Sign right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then I hear Roosevelt's name called. No, Roosevelt. Oh, I think this is tremendously exciting. Which way do we go? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. What do you mean? I got an invitation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is what? I know, I, I know. I, I know. Yeah, I'm tired. 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 i after we get these lined up, we'll get rid of the tally sheet. Two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. Have that are completed. Send those out of the way. Law, Barry. There are some things we ought to start talking about. Uh, I think we've gotten a green light to go forth and propose anything we want to and to have broad latitude in terms of how we influence this project. And I think we'll take advantage of it while we can because I think that at some point we might not be able to. But I do think that there are two things that just have to happen. We really need that initial program committed to start jotting down some ideas for us to consider and we desperately need on this Saturday to meet and adopt a structure of some kind so we can start moving.
the board uh, through the five standing committees uh, will uh, present a proposal. You have your public relations committee, you have your police procedures committee, your police training committee, your community involvement committee, uh, your community actions committee, and your uh, personnel committee. If the board accepts it, then the proposal, along with the proposed budget and the, the number of persons that will be needed to have necessary to institute the project, goes to OEO. And we do have enough money budgeted to go into it. We then begin operation on it. Now, whether this will uh, mean all of these programs or just some of them, again, only time will tell. Officers, I've been assigned to Scout 94 for this evening, 4 to midnight shift. May I have your last name and badge number, please? P. Lindsay, 3764. J. Valenti, badge number is 2218. Scout 90, check for signal 9, 1405, Gerard, Northwest, 1619. Scout 91, I said, why don't you pull over and let her get off? And what did you do? I pulled right on, right, I'll come right on. Block. I, she lived right here. You got a ticket for not having your head gear on. Uh, if you want to ride anybody, you better buy yourself another helmet. How much is close? I have no idea. You have to go to the station. Oregon 20. The Citizens Board determined that one of the things they needed to do was to have a station to recruit more local people into the police department. That one of the things they needed to do is to recruit more local people into the police department. The third district is that over 70% black, but yet the white applicants you have up from the fields of North Carolina and whatnot. The whole aim of it again is to get more inner city young men into this police department and change its complexion perhaps as well as its uh, way of operating. That may take years, but at least we're making a start. So, there yeah, I am. If I want a good life, I should want a wife and yeah. children. And that's a real good reason for me coming to police. Wow. At approximately 7 p.m., they were completely burned out. They lost everything. Uh, you are the mother of 10 children. And five months ago, you just lost your husband. Is this right? Yes. Do you have any idea how the fire started? Yes. Um the fireman said that gasoline was uh, all around, going all over the furniture. Mr. Wiggins, uh, were you there at the time you fired? No, at the time I was attending traffic school, but I, I'm sure that I know who uh, had this done. But I'm not sure who did it for. Would you rather have a smaller pack of <laughs> No, that, you put something there, didn't you, for me? This is milk, man. Because I saw that on the list of the apartment. What about some corn? Well, you know, it is, uh, you know, like, if you don't want me to do something a little later on this evening, then what I'll do, I'll just stop by and let me know. I don't have anything in particular to do this evening, okay? All right? The people in the community are complimenting you. There's no sham. We know that we're doing a good job, but suppose, you know, like at the end of April, the fund's in. Ain't no more money. What are we going to do if, you know, like if they don't fund us? Anybody want to re react to that question? Uh, we got uh, all the necessary criteria for this being a meaningful project and a successful program. So uh, I don't see no way possible that it could really end. To me, it was a test thing to see what we were capable of doing and what we weren't. I want to look forward to it, but uh, that's like everything else, you know? Uh, you know, a lot of us, man, have been into things like uh, hustling or doing other type of, you know, illegal activities to exist. And this job right here is taking us away from that, where we don't have to go through them type of change, you know. So I think if they took this program away, they could also be putting crimes back in the streets. So I think the program, you know, somebody owes us that much, you know, to refine the program. Well, everybody likes to pat themselves on the back, but I really think we're together, man.
we, the Lord and Youth Center Drama Company, has the pleasure of presenting to you the portrayal of one of the most deadly and influential enemies of our community, King Harold. Want to buy some dope? I want some dope. Hey, hey, Jackson. Jack, where my words at, man? Jack, the dope is beautiful. Man, where my you words at, then, Jack? What are my words you got in your arm? Man, be easy, Jack. The dope is good. You were knocking like that a minute ago. I was sick a minute ago, Jack. Yeah. You gonna sell that kid that dope, man? And then the dope gonna make him slick. He don't wanna go to school, don't wanna work. Child, that kid in the sixth grade, child, look at his books, man. And you gonna Shout. steal that kid out. Hey, Sean! Hey, Jesse, give me some salt and water, man. What? He fell out. What? Wait a minute, man. I'm in the town. You cut that dope. Man, the dope is good, man. Yeah. Give me shit to stay out. Hey, man, do something, man. It's hard not beating. Where the salt at? I said it's hard not beating. Do something. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard not beating. Don't leave me by myself. Please. Please don't leave me. But I don't want no fella to be shy. I can't be in with a man. Miss Angela Jones has been promoted from a GS3 to a 4. Uh, Grace Below has been reassigned as administrator here to the staff. Leon Zay Austin to the citizen board, which is us. All right. Uh, any more questions? Uh, I'm not on the board. I'm not on any of these committees. This is about the upteenth meeting I've been to. And I've noticed that all of these meetings are taken up by bureaucratic procedures and robber's rules of order. And I noticed another thing. It seemed like the black people here are scared to say anything. <laughs> I don't know that one robber's rules of order, one a uh, board meeting has ever stopped the policeman's bullet or a policeman's club from beating the hell out of a black person. Nothing is going to take place until black people get up off their ass in these meetings and begin to ask some relevant questions about this operation. All this jive and lying is only going to lead to frustrations in the damn street and you can't keep on this lying and what you can see, all this jive. Ain't nobody doing a jive. Just, just one moment. I promise, I promise to Every meeting that I, I, I'm speaking. Yeah, I can speak. Every meeting. You can't tell me those sisters are running the show. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. Mrs. Duff will give her report here. Mrs. Right. We wish to welcome you on behalf of the Pilot District Board to our fourth in a series of meetings involving business in the third district. Washington, please. We are in a section where people goes right by, and often uh, youngsters will try the door. Often they will come to use the telephone. I have been wondering if there wasn't something that the police department could do to keep them moving. Why not say, uh, I don't care to be interviewed, but there are a number of men hanging in front of a such and such a place, and they're obstructing business. We'll come. It we'll come. It seemed to me that they, was a more deterrent when they were walking the beat and their presence was felt in the community where I, I was born and raised right here in Washington. All on the East Street, all hours of night, walking up down the street, shaking doors. But I don't ever see them in my area. If you want to do something, you have to start now. Can y'all start now? You know, y'all, everybody complaining about the 14th Street area, and I don't see nothing done. Can you start now on the police problems? We're like quasi-soldiers. We obey orders. We're told what to do when we do it. As we say, when to start to move on the race problem, to start to move on the drug problem. With intelligence, whether you're talking about drug traffic or drug addicts. This was set up in the courts and through the district government. The police obey orders. If they come up with a thing that said, Police will, when picking up a narcotic user who has committed no other crime, and we take them down there. I don't agree with but that. I think that it has to start from the top. We can start with one or two and three individuals. It's true that the, the that you feel that the police also would welcome these things if they knew that they were available. So two ways through. If they knew what they were available. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate the fact that you're here and are having been here. That the police are here and that we're not in a confrontation. But it was something where we were all learning. I learned from what you've had to say here, and I hope that somehow... So we have to.
Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. I'm Very good. Very good. Top of us. Every time we can get together again, you know, many other things, you know, so we get them. Glad to have to have you all, sir. Which would have been the best input to the community? Now, this is what was done, and this is the policy that's used. Any vacancy that occurs, we search from within, we try to find a person from within, we stretch it in so far as is humanly possible to put that person in that position. You gotta have a staff to work with, and right now your staff are going in a different direction. I'd like to hear from some other board members. They think they can run this program without a staff. You don't have a staff. It seems to me that we're just repeating because you weren't here. Yeah, You're repeating something that we've spent a lot of time on. I know every meeting just spent a lot of time. I just got here, but I don't know what the discussion is all about, but none of us on the board, and certainly Mr. Landers, is not satisfied with a lot of the things that are happening. I'm sure that Mr. Landers could sit down with anybody to discuss ways of improving. But see, unless you do that, it seems to me you're being unfair to the community, and you're being unfair to those who have sat down and tried. But in my business or any other business, when, when things are not going right, staff is not going right, you start at the top. You don't start at the bottom. What do you first do? Trial and error. So what you do you first do? You try error, then you fire. That's yeah, all. I know. Uh, it's, not it's not done like that. You now. might dress it up some, but you're not going to dress it up at all. You're going to take spade as a spade, that's all. My only concern is not to defend anybody, but to talk about a process. And the project expires April 30th. Maybe it ought to just die if people feel that bad about it. I sure don't want to spend no more goddamn time there. Right so there. we have to decide whether or not the project is worth programming to try to continue. And if we're not going to be programmed to continue after April 3rd, I think we ought to just, just amble along and get through and go on home. Three, five. Her? I added that difference to this and came up with this. One. What is this figure? That's, that'll be our total. 268, 268. Check it on your tape. All righty. No, we get to 10 seconds. Good evening. Uh oh. So now this should come to the total of those three. But so we have to add on to here what's left off. This what is, is left? Wrong. This is wrong as it stands this now. Is yes. Wrong figure wise. Here, this came to to the board for the board to make a recommendation to the mayor to submit this to OEO. Is that true or false? That is true. Then I'm saying that. Here, the staff work in this thing is done by a bunch of chumps. Do we have any ad machines in here? Or do we need to bring one out here right now? Because we're going to need that. There's some serious problems involved in this program. You defeat it before you start, just on your math alone. I was asked for a figure, and I had the figures asked available. For, were you authorized to give this figure for me? I am the director of this project, yes. But you're not in charge of this project, per se. I am in charge of this project. I thought the board members in The charge. board sets policy. I am in charge of the administrative operations of this project. Right, the okay, board fine, tells fine. me what it wants to do, fine. I carry it out. Hey, well, this now, is now, 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 right, right there, right yeah, there. Carry it out. Right there, a the board tells you what to do. part of it is a budget. Right there, back up. Back up, hey, back up. The board tells you what to do. The board tells me what to do. Okay, now, that's all I want to hear. That's all I want to hear. Okay, now, that's all I want to hear. Okay, now, that's all I want to uh, may I ask you, uh, uh, Mr. Landis, has, has the, this particular program, the $2 million program, been discussed with the mayor? No, sir. Uh, we've got it's no being discussed now. So you took it on your own to recommend a budget? I did not submit a budget, a figure, Mr. Murphy. We can both play those games in words. I wasn't here, Mr. Murphy. You were. You were a part of it. Tell me I was a part of it today in preparation of submitting some board for less the amount that, that we received initially and double the damn amount. This is the failure of most businesses coming from a business position. How are we going to do anything this undercapitalized? Happened, How can we function this here? This is what happened. According to the man, yeah. I can't look. Well, I, I know what you want to do. You got to do don't know what you're talking about. Sit down and don't be talking to me in front of these people about it. Talk to the, the man. And the man knows it now. If he said he didn't know anything about it, when you mentioned it to him, the man knows it now.
Don't make her step forward. You don't have to stoop to that. Don't stoop. You're a professional man. Hold up your dignity. You can do it. Retain your cool. Retain your cool. You're a dedicated man. You've done a good job. Retain your cool. You never can tell what will happen between now and Thursday. You know, that's a week away. You've had very poor liaison. I agree with you. It's got to got reach a point that uh, whether I remain there as director or go, or whether anyone else comes, there's got to be a understanding as to what the board should, can do, what the director should do, where they cleave and where they come together. Your parliamentary procedure is very lax. That Donnie Brook at the last Thursday night meeting was ridiculous. It was disrespectful. The, the mayor's whole philosophy is that he does not want any controversy. He wants to keep things down. And if, if it means bearing the whole brunt of it up there, this is what he wants me to oh, do. Are you asking is for a person to come in and work with him and explain something? Even the mayor should be able to understand that. The mayor doesn't like to disturb the waters unless they in completely engulf him. You know that. Cool. Well, it's 8.30, uh, half an hour late, so uh, I'll call the meeting to order, and Mrs. Duff, uh, our chaplain, will you give the prayer, please? I want to give us this more, more knowledge, more wisdom, more understanding, so, so we will be able to deal with the issues that confront us in making this project a success. Amen. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, we were told to come to uh, the uh, project. It was two weeks ago that we were at the same place where we alerted the citizens to a menace that was getting ready to plague our community in terms of the police department indicating that they were going to fingerprint and mug all persons that were arrested for misdemeanors and for some traffic offenses. Now, we're not opposed to pictures being taken of people who committed felonies, but we think that 90% of the people that are arrested in Washington, D.C. are black people. Hey, man, I want you to go back to try to get Y'all, 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 just finished meeting with Chief Wilson, and I think everybody ought to understand that our position earlier, two weeks ago, was that we were opposed to the fingerprinting of people that were arrested for misdemeanors, and we've been discussing that for the last hour and a half, and uh, we have not uh, gotten a conclusiveness as to whether or not uh, it will continue in the third district. What, what are they trying to accomplish? Or what is the purpose of that? You have to ask the police department what they're trying to accomplish. I, I think we're just giving our position, yeah. and the chief can give his position. Aren't citizens supposed to have an input into the way the police station is operating? But if it had not been for the pilot district project and our vigilance, this thing would have gone through. So I think everybody understands this is the kind of thing that the project stands for. This is the kind of thing that the project wants to do because we're there to serve the community. And I think that this shows the strength and the success of that kind of project. And I think that the uh, chief can speak for himself, but he said that in general he supports the project and the mayor supports the project and that uh, uh, we're going to continue to try to get some money for it. Thank, Thank you. you very much.
be hitting people in the head. In that song? Blood in our hallway. Trash, stink. Got dogs in our building. And that's people, the kind of life you got to live, right? People stop fires right on. We kill each other, don't we? Right on. So we got to try to create some what? Some love and some feeling in our community for ourselves, right? What do you think about the police? There ain't nothing but pigs, man. Like, when I, when I was growing up looking for my father, man, like, they picked me up just because I wasn't in school and shit like that. So I said, man, what y'all gonna do with me? Mm -hmm. He said, I'm gonna take you to the, um, to the pig pen. I said, no, you ain't. You gonna take me to my aunt, buddy. So he said, all right, all right. So I said, man, y'all ain't nothing but pigs. Y'all know that? Mm -hmm. I told him right to their face. Then they come up here.